edger. Drum sander. We are doing the floors right now. So idea here as we get set up, drum sander, we've got, uh, we've got an, a 100 grit and a, uh, and a 120 grit. Um, this is for the big area, the main floor, and then the edger is to get close to all the pine in the corner so you don't damage the pine with the big machine. paper on. I misspoke before. 60 grit and 100 grit. So that's what we got. Here's 60 is on first piece and we just go with the planks in the same direction up and down. We'll see how we do. Lots of learning on this one. First piece of drum paper, done. <laughs> That's what 60 grit looks like after you do three quarters of the first pass in an old barn that's never been touched. Get a new piece on there, keep cranking. First pass, done. So just with one pass side to side with the 60 grit paper, this floor is already looking awesome and it's gonna just keep getting better from here. So we're gonna do another full pass with the 60, reevaluate um, the big thing, like see all these striations? We really wanna, hold on, there you go. So I really wanna get those out. I want a nice smooth uh, floor. So I think another pass with the 60 should do that for us. And then we'll move up to the 100, probably two passes with the 100. Then we'll start with the edging machine, go around all the edges and, uh, and we'll be good. A couple more hours. put down um, Benwood low luster floor finish polyurethane um, water based so no yellowing here that's the key um, this is our pine is already a super yellow wood as oil based stuff dries it tends to yellow a lot more uh, I've heard really really good things about the Benwood uh, this is my first time using it myself but I did see a recent application of this. My buddy, my contractor, John Rittner, uh, just put this down in the house in Woodstock that he's finishing. And I freaked out over the floors and asked him what he used. He told me this, go figure Benjamin Moore. No surprise there. So what we're gonna do is uh, brush the perimeter, cut it in so we don't want any of this on the walls. The walls I want to remain completely raw. I want them as flat as they are now. The floors we've got to protect because we've got a lot of a lot of foot traffic on it. So this will protect that nicely. Um, so we're going to cut around the corners, um, make sure that uh, that we've got a nice uh, border, and then we'll start rolling out the floors. I am going to put a little bit of tape around the the edges as well because I don't want any brush stroke getting up on the wall and then having a little mark of polyurethane. So we'll go ahead and start taping. Then we'll go and cut in, and then finally, we'll roll first coat, 
I'm gonna be coating and then doing another coat first thing tomorrow morning. Um, and that's about it. We're gonna get to it. All right, first coat is down. Sorry for the reflection, best I can do. Uh, obviously you gotta paint yourself out. Well, <laughs> I forgot the cameras in the uh, refrigerator cutout. So little iPhone catch up here. Uh, went down super easy. Floors look incredible already. I think it's gonna be three coats. This pine's been super dry. It's been up here for years, never been touched. So I think the first coat's gonna really soak in. The nice thing is hour to dry, two to three hours, and then you can do another application. So this will dry overnight. I'm gonna get a coat on first thing in the morning, set a three hour timer, and then put a third coat on because I really want these floors to be sealed and protected. Um, other than that, oh, it's raining. Another note, not great to put this stuff down in a very humid environment. You don't want over 50% humidity, relative humidity. The nice thing is I've got my train HVAC, my split unit. So the air conditioning is working. Air conditioning pulls a ton of moisture out of the air. Had the door closed the entire time. So I've got perfect temperature, perfect humidity inside and was able to work in a rainy, otherwise very humid condition. If you do not have air conditioning when you're finishing your floors, you gotta wait. You don't wanna be over 80 degrees. You don't wanna be over 50% humidity. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a good finish on these floors. So air conditioning is on all night. I'm gonna reach in, shut the lights off, and I'm calling it a day. Well, this makes things a little challenging. Uh, not exactly weather where you can where you can do the floors. I've got it set up in the three season room so we got plenty of good natural light. We're dry and we can get the desktop done and probably most of Rossi's dog balls done. Let's get into it. So time for epoxy. We've got our two-part epoxy solution. Uh, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so you're mixing them exactly. So I've got a whole bunch of these little mini Dixie cups, um, or solo cups rather. Um, you can use the lines to make sure that, that everything matches up. And I do know that I need a small amount to fill these cracks, so I'm not crazy. Uh, a couple of popsicle sticks for stirs, um, and that's about it. You're gonna mix it 50-50, start stirring it up, get it in the crack. And then the other tool that I have is a, uh, is a heat gun. Um, you can either use a heat gun or like a burnt somatic torch, but after the epoxy's down, you wanna be running the heat over the top of it so that you get all the bubbles to rise to the surface and pop. So as the epoxy dries, there are no air bubbles that get trapped in there. It does not look good. Trust me, I've already made that mistake. All right, so mixture A, mixture B, uh, poured them both just up to this bottom line here if you can see that right so we're going right here in both cups and then we pour one into the other one is a little more viscous than the other so pour the one that's easier to pour this gets mixed now you will notice with epoxy once you mix these two together it starts producing heat um, that's that's the chemical reaction and the beginning of the uh, the setting up phase um, you do have plenty of time to work with this stuff so don't get nervous but it's nothing that you want to leave mixed together. Like it will melt this cup eventually. I've seen it happen. Uh, so you don't throw this stuff in a garbage can and walk away. It can start a fire. You gotta be real cognizant with this stuff. I'm on a concrete floor here. So when I'm done, if I have any leftover epoxy, I'm gonna let it cure up in this exact cup on top of a, a concrete surface, not touching anything until I know it's safe to throw away. Um, you don't wanna have an issue. So, and by the way, I'm probably gonna have to mix two or three of these. What I don't wanna do is have an, a lot of extra epoxy that I'm then wasting and throwing away. So I'm kind of mixing it as I go um, and dumping it into the cracks and, and we're gonna get a feel for exactly how much I'm gonna need. 
You have plenty of time to work with this. You can pour over the top of dried epoxy. It's, it's not a big deal. You can layer it. So it's, it's you know, pr pretty friendly to work. So that's it. So air bubbles are out, epoxy we found it's level. This is gonna sit and cure for 24 hours. Uh, and since I'm going home tonight, that means this is gonna sit and cure till Monday. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be back to finish it up and get it installed. All right, rain has stopped. I'm over here by the barn. To say I'm excited is a massive understatement. The Benwood on these floors I mean, could not be happier with the way these floors look. Super stoked, super stoked. So we're gonna get another coat down. I think it's really only gonna be two coats. I mean, the coverage was incredible. Uh, train, without air conditioning, this would not have happened yesterday. So really thrilled with how much humidity this little, uh, this little unit pulls out of the air. It cools this place super quickly. And, uh, and it feels really good in here. Everything is bone dry. So we're gonna go ahead and get another coat on.